one of the most intelligent and rare hunters in the old forgotten forest, this puma-like monstrosity stalks any prey it sees. Known for its ability to shift and displace itself, the creature is extremely difficult to hit or to avoid. The beast that you might see before you could be merely an illusion, a trick of the light, whilst the real one is right above you already with its mouth over your head. Before we start dissecting this monster, let's go over and see what the 5th edition monster manual tells us about the Displacer Beast. So right from the get-go, we're told of what makes this creature so interesting. It says right here, this monstrous predator takes its name from its ability to displace light so that it appears to be several feet away from its actual location. It says the creature looks like a sleek great cat covered in blue-black fur. However, its otherworldly origins are clear in its six legs and the two tentacles sprouting from its shoulders, both ending in pads tipped with spiky protrusions. Down here, it says the displacer beast roamed at the twilight lands of the Feywild for ages until they were captured and trained by the unseely court. The warriors of the court selectively bred the beast to reinforce their ferocious and predatory nature, using them to hunt unicorns, pegasi, and other wondrous prey. Eventually though, they escaped their masters. Now this part down here is really important because it solves a long-running mystery that Dungeons and Dragons had since decades. It says that running and breeding freely in the Feywild, the displacer beast soon came to the attention of the court. With Blink Dog companions at their side, Fey Hunters drove these predators to the fringes of the Feywild where many crossed over to the Material Plane. To this day, Displacer Beast and Blink Dogs attack each other on sight. See, the hatred between Displacer Beast and Blink Dogs was fomented literally since first edition. This here is the first edition entry of the Displacer Beast and you can see, even back then they wrote, quote, these fierce creatures hate all life, but they particularly hate blink dogs, end quote. This continued on in 2nd edition and 3rd edition and never were we actually given an explanation as to why that was the case. Like, like why did they hate each other so much? Really just one of those mysteries that was never solved, I suppose, until now. 4th edition told us that they were from the Feywild, which was news to us back then, but now we finally got the full story. Anyways, continuing on, it says the Displacer Beasts kill not just for food, but also for sport. They target prey even when not hungry, and toying with their victims to entertain themselves until they are ready to eat. This is basically why they are considered to be an evil creature. You can feel the evilness and cruelty ushering from them. Down here it says that they are great at ambushes, working together as a pack to bring down prey decisively. They recall the frequency and schedule of regular caravans, laying down ambushes to pick off those caravans. That's where the intelligence of Six really starts to pick up. Really smart monsters. And lastly, we just have a small section here where we're told that they are great guardians and pets for evil villains, though the Displacer Beast only allows these alliances for as long as it is beneficial to it. Over here we have the character sheet, you can see that the creature is large, so large that you could technically be able to write it, and nothing else around here that's important except just really good stats and the fact that they cannot speak or understand any language. And they are really good at avoiding things, that is of course thanks to their displacement, the fact that they are actually not where people think they are. Attack rolls against them have disadvantage as well for as long as you don't know where the actual beast is at. If you manage to actually hit the beast, the effect is nullified until the beast acts again. Now down here in attacks you can see the tentacle attacks, though of course you would notice that there are no bite or claw attacks in here, and actually there's a reason for that, though they don't seem to go into it here, but, but that's it. So now let's go ahead and see what they didn't tell you about the displacer beast. It probably makes sense for me to start with their special displacement ability, which is their main source of power. Power that falls closer to the supernatural rather than the magical. First of all, Displacer Beast's illusionary camouflage, if you will, cannot be dispelled by magic. A dispel magic effect cast upon the beast will do nothing. Furthermore, you also cannot simply disbelieve the illusion out of existence like you can with normal illusions. Striking the illusion will also not reveal the actual location of the beast, neither will it destroy the effect, though of course it will reveal the illusion for what it is. 
See, the way it actually works is through molecular vibrations. Essentially, there is a specialized group of nerves that exist all throughout the outer layers of the beast's skin cells that stimulate those cells and then force them to vibrate rapidly. The vibrational movement is too minute to be normally noticed and you should be able to feel it if you were to touch the skin of the beast. The vibrations bend and redirect the rays of colored light. The refracted light rays form the illusory image while the true form is masked, virtually invisible. This ability appears to be completely automatic, but it may be consciously directed by the beast. The caveat here, however, is that because the vibrations specifically redirect colored light, it is very much possible for this effect to simply not work while in complete darkness. Furthermore, it is interesting that this displacement effect actually doesn't work on other displacer beasts who can see each other's true location without any issue. One explanation for this is their special eyes. See, in 5th edition Monster Manual, it was ascribed to us that the eyes of the displacer beast glow and that that glow will persist even after death. Well, this interesting factoid is not new to 5th edition. This has been a thing since 2nd edition where it says, quote, their eyes glow bright green even after death, end quote. You should also know that these eyes are also highly prized as good luck charms, said to protect the bearer from magical detection. So it is entirely possible that it is through these eyes that they can see each other's real location, seeing how special they are, though this is not confirmed. See, Displacer Beasts have a very bizarre anatomy, which as far as the lore of the D is concerned, hasn't been fully tested and explored. The eyes being, of course, one example of that. This has to do with two main factors. Number one, the Displacer Bees are actually extremely rare. Their kind were massacred in the Feywild and only a few groups managed to move on to the Material Plane and those that did settled in far and hidden remote locations. These monsters are not like the owlbears or the ankegs or the yetis or, or most other monsters. These guys are actually really rare and you have to go out of your way to find one. And number two, because of the constant vibrations in their body and their odd fey upbringing, displacer beasts are unusually likely to produce mutant offspring. These offspring might have different features than their parents, but more than likely what happens is these babies will grow to tremendous size, reaching a length of 20 feet and standing almost 10 feet high at the shoulder. They will be a normal displacer beast for all intents and purposes except that they are ginormous. These we call pack lords and they inevitably become the leaders of any pack they join. Because of those two factors, we just don't know much about displacer beast anatomy and one of the most bizarre features is of course their nasty tentacles. They are by far the main clue into their apparent creation, but what makes those tentacles odd is not something that you would actually ever imagine. See, according to the lore, many scientists have spent countless years trying to figure out the nature of the evilness of the displacer beast and, and how maybe they can fix it. In their studies, they actually uncovered that the tentacles might have something to do with it. See, baby displacer beasts are actually super cute. They play with one another, they cuddle and are not aggressive in the least. But then as soon as they start growing those tentacles two months into their life, Lives, they completely and irreversibly change into violent killers. They believe this change in personality is tied up to a type of growth hormone, which not just changes their brain, but also speeds up their growth unnaturally. Displacer bees grow unnaturally fast, being able to grow to maturity in just about four months. In total, they go from a tiny house cat to a 500 pound full size large monster in just about two years, a particularly fast growing rate for a creature that lives up to 100 years. This growth hormone and the tentacles that come with it might have been clues to just exactly what the Uncili court in the Feywild did to these cats to turn them into these mercilessly killing machines. Do note, however, that the Splacer Beast will never attack each other. They have zero rivalries between groups and instead work together always as a seamless group to bring down foes. Because baby displacer beasts have absolutely no killing intent in their bodies, they are very well protected by their parents until they come of age. These babies will literally never leave the lair until they develop their tentacles and by that point they will already be half the size of an adult. Because of this, many people actually thought baby displacer beasts just didn't exist. Nobody had ever seen one. 
Remember, these guys are very rare as it is. Quote, Displacer bees mate in the autumn and the young are born on spring. A mated pair of displacer bees makes its home in a cave, producing litters of one to four young. While raising young, the monsters are fiercely protective of their lairs. One adult will always remain with the cubs, usually the female, while the other goes off to hunt. Dead prey is dragged back into the lair to be eaten by the family." End quote. As you would expect, adult females have mammary glands and they nurse their cubs until they reach mental maturity, though it is important to mention that these babies are born with their eyes open and with teeth, unlike normal carnivores. They are basically ready to eat meat from the second that they are born. The birth the rate among displacer bees, however, appears to be really, really low, which also further explains why they are still so rare in spite of the long years that they have been out in the wild. Now it is finally time to talk about the Displacer Beast vs Blink Dog debacle. The 5th edition Monster Manual explained to us the, the history between this hatred, but not exactly how this triggers or what exactly happens to the animals up and seeing each other. So here's the stat sheet for the Blink Dog, nothing too wild. It's a fey dog that has the ability to teleport. It says here, a Blink Dog takes its name from its ability to blink in and out of existence, a talent it uses to aid its attacks and to avoid harm. Blink dogs harbor a long-standing hatred for displacer beasts and attack them on sight. Now the way these two monsters interact with one another is extremely cool. This comes from Dragon Magazine number 109, an excerpt coming from a scientist who tested on displacer beasts. Quote, my explanation is based upon prolonged experimentation and the deaths of several blink dogs. The very actions of displacement and blinking seem to interfere with the nervous and mental systems of the opposing creatures. I have seen a blindfolded displacer beast jump and yowl when a blank dog was allowed to teleport itself within several feet of the former's cage. The blink dog, in turn, began to snarl and bark in the direction of the displacer beast even though it, too, was blindfolded, had its sensitive nose covered and was within an area of a spell of silence. Detection of the other is automatic for each and appears to trigger hate, ferocity and violence in both animals, especially the displacer beast whose special nerves are spread throughout its entire body. This occurs whenever the creatures are within 150 feet of one another. Even if the blink dogs are not using their power or if the displacer beasts are asleep and not using theirs, both have learned to identify the other by scent and sight, provoking automatic flight or attack depending upon the circumstances. Both species can also detect the approximate location of their enemy should their respective special powers be brought into play, and some rather sophisticated blink dogs have learned to not use their powers when preparing ambushes for the displacers. Blink dogs get a general feeling for the direction of which a displacer beast lies, but the displacers can find a blink dog as soon as it blinks in with unfailing accuracy. End quote. It is really interesting that if you were to wear a displacing cloak, which is of course a, a magical cloak made out of the displacer beast's hide, you actually get to trigger this very same violent response from blink dogs, and they will not be fooled by your own displacement. Essentially, if you see a blink dog and you have this cape on, it will attack you until you're dead. Now, on the other hand, casting the spell blink will not trigger a violent response from a displacer beast since their trigger is based more on the magical biology of the dog and not on the nature of the spell itself. Now, to finish off the video, let's talk a bit about some of the features of the Displacer Beast that the 5th edition Monster Manual neglected to mention, starting with the interesting uses of their many legs. I, I can imagine how most people would come to the conclusion that Displacer Beasts probably don't claw their enemies because they simply need their legs to move, but that's actually not the case. Displacer Beasts can actually run faster by only using four of its legs rather than using its full six. In fact, and, and you're gonna like this one, when a displacer beast dashes, that is exactly what it does. It uses its hind forelegs to run while keeping its front legs elevated high, literally like a centaur. So yeah, they can claw you if they wanted to. They simply just don't want to. It sounds like a silly answer to that question, but that's literally what the lore says. Quote, Displacer beast will not use their claws or teeth unless near death. 
or when in combat with a very large opponent, end quote. It is never really explained why this is the case. Though you would be surprised to know that one use they have for those legs of them is for incredible jumps. A displacer beast can leap 20 feet straight up or 20 feet across on a standing jump or double that on a running jump. Quote, Unlike many other creatures with more than four legs that have slow metabolisms, the displacer beast can move with great speed and with high dexterity, despite the extra pair of legs that might get in the way. End quote. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would like to personally thank my Patreon supporters, Zach Bowell, Rukato Fan, Barry Mascan, 5e e Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Morgan Johnson, Rusty Rain, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Dog Feeder, Brad Salazar, Terry Kolb, The Great Codini, Walker Motley, Omega Scales, Garathas the Bulwark, Sirung King, Ozoil, Errol Nelson, Alex Cookson, Griffin Pierce, Falky951, Benjamin Bosters, Mr. Salty, Thomas Hunt, Drayden, Tesla Coil, The Role Playing Junkies Podcast, Silent Chopper, Prince Daylight Morning Crown, Jericho Darkstar, Sabine Kursia, Troll Skull Dude, Solarensis, Ordoric, Williams Ladden, Nathan McComb, Bushido Burrito, AG Dare Music, Soulless Rider, Roleplay with Advantage, Blake Ash, Stalia, Items to Astound on DMs Guild, Samuel King, Lost Crusader, and Sean Duthat for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you would like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash Rex to support. Now, if you're a $10 or $25 Patreon supporter, make sure to go over on Patreon and see what the new poll is going to be so that you get to decide what the next monster is going to be. So please go ahead and do that. And also, thank you all very much for liking, commenting, subscribing, uh, doing all that good stuff. I, I really appreciate it. It really does help. But yeah, that's basically it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.